At Officer Cameron Perry's funeral, a day marked by a cold brightness and steady rain, mourners noticed his dog barking incessantly at the coffin. After some hesitation, they opened the coffin, only to recoil in horror. Perry's family, who had not seen him in nearly five years, had traveled from California to New York and were among the shocked onlookers. They took their seats beside the coffin as Cameron's fellow officers arrived on the scene. All of the officers were dressed in uniform, all except the large dog who walked beside them. The dog, Cole, had been the fallen officer's partner with the department, and after losing his companion, he was understandably devastated. The pair of them had gotten off to a rocky start, but within months they had become inseparable, and now the canine officer was heartbroken at the man's unexpected passing. During the interruption of a warehouse robbery, the officers took their places among the mourners in coffin, allowing the loyal dog to lie down by their feet. At first, things were silent, except for the soft sobs coming from Cameron's family. It wasn't until Cole finally stood and approached the coffin that the atmosphere began to shift. The canine officer had been sniffing along the edge of the casket, soft whimpers coming from Cole's throat. It wasn't until the animal let out a loud bark, causing most of the guests to jump, that the other officers came forward, attempting to pull the dog away. The canine officer, however, continued to bark at the grave, pulling on the leash as he was removed. Everyone thought that the canine was overwhelmed with grief. However, nothing could have prepared them for the shocking truth they were about to uncover. When Officer Cameron Perry joined the police department in 2012, he immediately decided to try and qualify for the canine partner unit. As a child, Cameron had always loved dogs and never went anywhere without his childhood canine companion. The loyal dog had passed away two years prior, however, and while the man was still upset, he was ready to let a new best friend into his life. Cole, a three-year veteran of the K-9 division, had recently lost his partner due to unforeseen circumstances. Normally, dogs in Cole's situation would be put up for adoption through the program's partnership with local shelters. However, the K-9 officer was not always trusting of new people. This meant it would be difficult for him to be adopted. The dog's best chance was to find and bond with a new partner. Numerous officers had been assigned to Cole over the last year, and while the dog did his best to protect his human partner's back, he never seemed to bond with any of them. Due to this, the brave canine suddenly found himself listed as difficult to place. Dogs with trouble bonding with partners would often be released from their duties. And for Cole, time was running out. That was until Cameron found himself assigned as the dog's partner. The officer had been warned ahead of time that he would have trouble getting close to the dog, yet the man was hopeful. When the day came to meet his new partner, Cameron came equipped with treats as well as a soft dog bed in the back of his patrol car. The man waited eagerly in the police station parking lot as Cole was brought out. As soon as the canine officer arrived, escorted by another officer, Cameron came forward, unable to wait any longer. The man put his hand out towards the dog as he'd been instructed to do. Cole, for his part, sniffed the officer curiously, barking once before laying down as his lead was handed over. The newly joined partners suddenly found themselves alone in the empty lot, and the man whistled softly as he moved toward his car. His canine partner followed behind slowly, jumping inside the open door and curling up on the seat opposite the bat. Cameron frowned in response but got in the driver's seat anyway. He hoped that, eventually, the doll would come to trust him as much as he had the original officer. The first week he was passed by in a blur. Not much happened in a small town like this, so most of the calls were easy. The pair worked well together, and while the job was always done perfectly, it was not. Cameron couldn't help feeling sad at Cole, and there was a continued lack of bond with him. The dog would follow along after the man at every scene, comply with commands, and even eat the food provided. However, when it was time to retire from their shift, the canine would head back to the kennels at the station instead of heading home with his partner. Most of the dogs lived with their human offices after shift, yet Cole never showed any interest in that. Cameron had gone out of his way to make his house perfect for his canine partner. Though he had moved to the area after graduating college and lived alone, with his family remaining in his home state, due to this, he had decided to turn his bachelor pad of an apartment into a safe and welcoming area for his new companion. Comfy blankets and a warm bed filled the corner of the man's room, and several toys and treats remained sealed in their packages, awaiting Cole's arrival. Everything was ready for when the dog arrived, yet, as the weeks continued to pass with no change, it seemed as if the canine officer would never be ready to join his companion at home. 
All of this changed, however, about two months after the pair teamed up. A call came into the station about a young girl, Eva, who had gone missing after a hiking trip. Rescue teams had been unable to locate her, and no one had managed to reach the girl through her cell phone, Cameron and Cole were quickly dispatched. The dog had been the top scorer in search and rescue, and everyone was hopeful he would be able to locate the missing girl. As soon as they arrived, rescuers brought forth a piece of the girl's clothing, donated by her parents. The canine officer sniffed it a few times while walking around the area that had been roped off before letting out a bark and running off in the opposite direction. Unknown to the officers and searchers, Eva had altered her plans, taking a trail on the opposite side of the forest. Cameron hurried to keep up with his partner as the dog's leash slipped from his hand. Cole was fast, and the man lost sight of him as he raced up the trail. The officer continued to pursue his partner, and after several minutes, a loud series of barks could be heard echoing along the trail. It seemed as if the dog had located Eva. Cameron and the rescuers hurried to catch up. It took the group a few minutes to arrive, and as soon as they did, everyone gasped in shock. There had been a lot of storms in the area recently, and it seemed as if part of the trail had fallen off the side of the cliff and into a ravine. Eva was several feet down. It seemed as if the girl had managed to climb part of the way back up before passing out atop a pile of debris. Cole continued to bark until his partner approached, commanding him to stop. The dog lay down on the ground as his partner approached. Unfortunately, the ground was still soft from the recent slide and began to give way as Cameron placed his weight on it. Everyone gasped as the dog stood back up, whining as he struggled to maintain his footing on the suddenly shifting ground. The officer acted quickly, however, and lunged forward, grabbing Cole by his harness and pulling the canine to safety. Rescue crews quickly moved in, carefully extracting Eva as the pair of officers were checked over by paramedics. Both were fine, and while the girl was dehydrated and had some injuries, she was expected to make a full recovery thanks to the loyal canine officer's intervention, as well as his partner's. Everyone would go home safe that night. The pair's shift was over for now, and tears filled his eyes as Cameron opened the cruiser's door for Cole. For the first time in two months, the dog curled up inside the waiting bed, wagging his tail as the man patted his head. It seemed that he had finally earned his new partner's trust. That night, Cole went home with Cameron for the first time since losing his previous partner instead of sleeping in the station kennel. Over the next year, Cole and Cameron continued to grow close, and after 15 months on the job together, it seemed as if the pair were inseparable. All of the other officers who had been unsuccessful in becoming the dog's partner were thrilled for the pair and their unlikely friendship. Things continued to go well for the partners until one late night in July 2013. There had been a string of burglaries over the past few months, and the thieves would target warehouses in the area with little or no security. At first, the group would simply steal products from a storage area, until one night, an unlucky security guard was found shot just outside the warehouse. The robbers were upgraded to dangerous within the department, and catching them became the highest priority. Due to this, Cole and Cameron found themselves teamed up with another officer, Audrey. He was a rookie who had joined the department a few months prior. With recruitment down and the dangerous gang of thieves on the loose, the department decided to allow the man to help with the warehouse robberies as long as an older officer accompanied him. On this particular night, the trio found themselves patrolling a new warehouse that had just opened outside the city limits. The thieves had been getting bolder over the last few weeks, and due to a lack of funds, the warehouse owners had not hived security or installed any cameras. However, the company used the facility to store high-value items, which meant that it was a prime target for the group. The department decided to have the trio wait outside, in an unmarked car, to watch for any signs of activity. Hours passed by, and just as the pair was about to give up, Cole set out a soft growl, and his partner looked up in time to see a dark shape slink away along the side of the building's wall. Cameron quickly signaled to Audrey to get out, and the trio approached the building slowly, weapons at the ready. As they crept closer, Audrey decided to take the left side of the facility, while Cole and Cameron took the right. It wasn't long after the group split up that the canine officer let out another soft growling sound. Officer Perry looked up to see three people dressed in black hoodies attempting to open the back door of the warehouse, and he drew his service weapon carefully, demanding that the group freeze and place their hands in the air. The figures outside the door paused, and for a moment, Everything seemed to be going according to plan until Cole suddenly let out a yelp, and the sound of gunfire split the air. 
One of the other thieves snuck up behind Audrey as he approached alone, and as the rookie rounded the corner to join his fellow officers, the suspect opened fire. The scene quickly descended into chaos. Cameron had just enough time to radio in a distress call before he saw a man coming at him. By the time other officers arrived on the scene, the group was long gone, and Cole, as well as his two fellow officers were injured. The group was quickly sent to receive medical treatment, and, while the canine officer's injuries were not as severe, the department was informed by the hospital that Officer Perry had succumbed to his injuries that night. Once again, the dog had lost his partner, and the fallen man's funeral was planned and covered by the department, since his family lived so far away. Audrey, the other officer on the scene, had been placed in a coma to heal from his injuries. The family flew in on the day of the funeral and Cole, who had been under the care of another officer from the department, was brought in to say farewell to his partner. It seemed as if things were progressing as normal, until Cole began barking at the casket. The other officers, including the canine's new partner, did their best to calm him. However, nothing seemed to quiet the dog. The family was getting more upset now, with the clear display of the canine's loyalty breaking their hearts. Despite everyone's efforts, the fallen officer's partner refused to quiet down, and Cole's new partner found himself toppling to the ground as the dog yanked free, racing back towards the casket once again. When the canine officer reached him, his bark became frantic, and nothing seemed to calm Cole down. No one was sure of what to do until a senior officer stood up and addressed the group over the sound of the dog's barking. The man informed everyone that he had seen this happen before with canine officers and that usually, once the casket was opened and the dog could see its partner's face, they usually calmed down. The family was reluctant. No one had seen the man's body, and due to the lack of a wake and their late arrival time, the family had opted for a closed casket service. The sounds coming from Cole were beyond heartbreaking, and not wanting to see the loyal dog suffer anymore, the fallen officer's mother agreed to open the coffin. A representative of the funeral home stepped forward, and as the lid was lifted, the officer's mother screamed in horror. The body inside the casket was not Cameron Perry, and everyone stood in shock as the woman stood up, demanding to know who this man was and what happened to her son. On the other hand, Cole finally grew silent, lying down next to the grave. It seemed as if the dog had known all along that the coffin did not belong to his partner, and now that he had drawn attention to it, he was content to stay where he was. Cameron's mother was furious, and the funeral was halted as the head of the police department and the hospital were called. Everyone wanted to know how something like this could have happened. How could Officer Perry have been reported as deceased, and yet have a different young man placed inside his casket? The family and MBR are as quickly dispersed, heading back down to the police department, accompanied by Cole and his fellow officers. An investigation was quickly launched to understand what had happened. The hospital had identified the deceased as Officer Cameron Perry, and while there had been a mistake, it was unclear how the mistake had happened. The head of the police department and the family, including Cole and his new partner, headed to the hospital, hoping for answers. While waiting for the group to arrive, the doctor who had handled the officer's case had it downstairs to the area where the deceased patient's belongings were stored until family members could retrieve the ID as well as belongings. They had recovered from both officers, including the man who remained in a coma, was sealed inside the bags, carefully labeled with their names. The items were taken from the pair when they were brought in, and seeing as it had been a busy night, it was possible that the men's IDs had not been properly checked. The doctor wanted to cover all of his paces, and as he pulled out the bags and opened them onto the table, he realized that the hospital had made a terrible mistake. It seemed that amid the chaos of that night, it was just as he suspected, no one had bothered to properly check the IDs inside the wallets they recovered from the men. One of the bags, which had been marked as that of the man in a coma, contained the ID of Officer Audrey Collins, whose picture most certainly did not match the man in a hospital bed upstairs with his hands shaking. The doctor heard hurriedly to open the bag that had been marked as the deceased man's belongings. He grabbed the wallet out and upon seeing the ID inside, rushed to call the hospital director. The wallet inside the deceased bag belonged to Officer Cameron Perry. It was clear now that somehow a very critical mistake had been made in the identification of the bodies. As soon as the group arrived, they were ushered into the hospital director's office. After a lengthy discussion and several apologies, the story of how this unfortunate mix-up had happened came to light. On the night of the warehouse incident, two men were brought to the hospital from the scene. 
One of the men had been shot and passed away during surgery. For more information visit www.vima.gov. It seemed that the other man had put up a fight with the thieves. However, unfortunately, due to the injuries sustained, that officer had been put into a medically induced coma to heal and bandages were placed over most of his face to cover the deep wounds one of the attackers had made. It was believed that the suspect had used some weapon instead of just his hands, leading to the facial damage. During all of the hectic events at the scene and the hospital that night, no one had thought to check the IDs inside the wallets they recovered from the men. Since Cameron's family had been across the country at the time, no one had been available to ID the deceased body. Therefore, it was assumed the hospital's initial identification was correct. In addition, the police department was already understaffed, so they took the hospital's word and arranged the funeral based on the paperwork they had received. Both officers' families were contacted. Audrey's family planned to arrive the day after Cameron's funeral. Cameron's canine partner was the only one who had realized the terrible mistake. And had it not been for Cole's determination to get the casket open, the mix-up would not have been realized until the wrong man had been placed in Cameron's grave. Both families were outraged, however, after numerous apologies from both the police department and the hospital, a settlement was reached with both parties. The funeral was held once more, this time for Officer Audrey Collins. Everything went according to plan this time, and a month after the warehouse incident, Cameron, who had been placed in a coma under Audrey's name, woke up. The man was devastated to learn of what Audrey's family had gone through and offered his condolences to his fellow fallen officer's relatives. It took another month for Cameron to recover from his injuries properly. The group of thieves had badly beaten him. Cole stayed by his partner's side the entire time. The pair are still just as inseparable as before the incident. The next year, Cameron, despite his bad experience with the warehouse thieves, took the recertification test to rejoin his fellow officers. The man passed with flying colors, and he and his loyal companion, Cole, were back on the job. To this day, the pair remained partners, thanks to Cole's dedication to his partner. The heartbreaking truth and mix-up were revealed, allowing Cameron and Audrey's families to receive the closure they deserved. What an incredible story! If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. See you in the next video.